BMW up in the air with the front end pulled out of it. I know what you're thinking, and yeah, you are correct. The cooling system had a problem. Back in September of 2020, my buddy Joel and I decided to drive the M3 to a local autocross for a nice casual day. No loading or unloading it off the trailer, no towing, very few tools and supplies, just a nice relaxing day. That lasted midway through our second run and then things went south. All right, so something happened yeah. and one of the radiator fins popped off. So we've disassembled enough of this and uh, we wired it up, tried to go for another lap, but this vent tube, not sure what that's supposed to be going to. I assume the overflow tank, but that was puking coolant. So we stopped. Now I'm gonna try to figure out, take this apart and see what's wrong. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so that hose is now riding in there. We broke all the top part off. Uh, we think it's gonna hold and that hose is routed out of the way. It's mostly steam. That should be okay I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes. See how it's looking No drips yet. That's old drips right there. Ignore those All right Temperature gauge is looking pretty good. Ignore the other warning lights. Those are fine. Another successful day of auto racing Joel That's right <laughs> All right, so where we're at right now is I have removed the radiator along with all of the tubes and everything. I've drained the coolant. I have broken this 32 millimeter nut loose right there. And uh, we're at the point where I can start getting everything ready to put the radiator back in with a new part. So instead of replacing the mechanical fan with another mechanical fan, I did a lot of reading online and apparently a lot of people like to get rid of the mechanical fan because it has so many issues or it's like a common thing that's gonna break and they like to replace it with an electric fan, which makes sense. Um, I didn't think I was gonna deal with the mechanical fan issue because uh, I've got solid engine mounts, I've got poly mounts, and I didn't think that the fan and the radiator would be able to flex that much. I think the radiator is the thing that actually flex though, and the fan and the engine were pretty steady. So uh, I've gone ahead and gotten the electric fan parts, and let me run you through them. Uh, I've gone ahead and replaced, or I'm gonna replace the thermostat housing and the thermostat. Um, one of the things that you're supposed to do when you do an electric fan mod is put in a lower temperature thermostat. Uh, because you want it to open sooner. So I've got a 80 degree Celsius thermostat. I've got an aluminum housing for it to go in. Mishimoto 16 inch, I believe, fan. Um, and then let me see what else. Oh, I've got the Mishimoto wiring kit right there with instructions. All this will be in the description, of course. Um, that stuff's not affiliate links or anything. It's just the description. Uh, then I got some other replacement hardware. These are the rubber pieces that go on the top of the radiator because they looked worn and flexed and I think they contributed to the problem. Radiator rubber mounts for the bottom, new plastic clip pieces. They came out okay, but just to be safe. Uh, the nut that goes over the end of the mechanical fan, you know, some gaskets, uh, replacement hose. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the mechanical fan off. I also wanna get this auxiliary fan off. I don't know if you can see that right there. That's not really needed. Apparently that mostly does work for the AC condenser and it can come on when the regular radiator is really hot. Uh, but I see it come on very, very rarely. As far as I can tell, it doesn't really do anything. So that's gonna be a little bit of a pain to get off without taking the bumper off. And I'm really trying to avoid taking the, the top of the bumper here, but uh, I'm gonna get that off and then that'll be a little more airflow onto the radiator. So I'm not gonna do like a whole bunch of time lapses or anything. I'll do a few and just check in throughout the process. I've been using the steam cleaner to get goop off the engine. Got the new thermostat and thermostat housing in. Replaced the mechanical fan with uh, that blocking off little nut. All right, so I'm relocating the coolant expansion tank over to this side. Um, so I'm gonna go wide angle here. 
to avoid getting another shroud that could possibly get in the way and get hit by stuff. Apparently it's popular to relocate over here. Only problem with that is this bracket, which I'll put in the description. It seems like a pretty well-made bracket. Uh, this is not nearly as snug in it as it's supposed to be. And it's a new OEM tank. Everything that I'm replacing with is OEM. So I'm sure it's just something that's slightly out of spec on a couple different things, but got to figure that out. And we also have the top here bent in a little bit, bent towards the block so that it'll angle this down like that. I'm really bad at filming when friends are over helping me because I don't want to feel like I'm wasting their time or like talking a bunch in front of the camera, but uh, got everything wired up. I did a quick test, which I'll throw in. That's a good sign. So the fan's loud, but it appears to work okay. So I've got the wiring fairly buttoned up. You gotta keep in mind, a lot of that is the original wiring harness. If this works out well, I'll shorten out the red wire there. Uh, and then the Mishimoto fan controller mounted up here. If anyone has an E36, I know I could Google this, but what is that box with the hose that comes out there? It's never really made sense what that does. I know I, you know, a lot of stuff in this car has been removed, but then the wire is run through there into the fuse box. I'm not really a fan of the uh, kind of zip ties on the radiator here, but you know. Okay, so it's not working. If I have the manual override and the constant power jumped off the positive terminal, it works. However, the temperature sensor does not appear to work because I have to jump it in order to get it to turn on. And the constant power coming from the fuse box also does not appear to be working. So, it's not working yet. Here's where we're at. I pulled that wiring out. I mean, it's still in the car, you know, it's just not, not all tucked up. And I've been testing the temperature sensor and it actually seems like it's working okay. I think there were two problems going on. One, that wire right there is, uh, that's the power that's supposed to be coming from switched power. So when the car cuts on, that's supposed to cut on. I just have that given continuous power right now so I can isolate that as a part of troubleshooting. So the relay is cutting on, that's working great. Um, the green wire is a manual turn on wire for the fan. So like if I do this, it'll cut on. Hard to get a good connection when I'm using one hand for the camera, but, uh, and that's independent of what the temperature sensor is doing. So with the temperature sensor, I've got it set up like that because I was hitting it with a heat gun and waiting for it to turn on. Let me show you what happens. So that appears to be working fine. So I think it's possible there were two problems. First problem being the switched power was not working correctly. That part seems pretty obvious. Uh, I think it's possibly because the wire I was using is like leftover speaker uh, power wire for like a little behind the seat sub. I wouldn't have thought it would have any issues. I'm having issues with autofocus today. I wouldn't have thought that would have had issues, but maybe it did. Maybe something messed up in my wiring. So I've gotten much better copper wiring to try. And then I think the temperature sensor maybe just wasn't in a hot enough area of the radiator. I tried a couple different locations. All right, you may notice that is not a fuse tap, and that's because uh, it looks like the fuse tap I got from Big Name Auto Parts Store uh, doesn't work. I tested with and without it quite a few times, and I, I think it's simple enough. I don't know why it wouldn't work, but it doesn't appear to. So uh, I've got new wiring run, heat shrinked, all that stuff. I should have gotten heat shrink butt connectors a long time ago. They look so good. The temperature sensor is right down there. It might be a little bit hard to see, but it's right next to the fan. Uh, I don't really love how it's secured right now. I feel like that's gonna need to be better than it is, but I'm going to uh, move that out of the way, get this outside and see if it works. I don't know if you can read that, 208. I'm starting to get it working. Uh, I moved the sensor again. 
to right there. Yes, you can cringe if you don't like those being stuck through the fins. Uh, I think the system still needed to be bled a little bit more. So you can see I've got it lifted up in the BMW uh, system bleeding configuration. I better increase my shutter speed just a little bit there. Um, so I did that. And it still just wasn't getting hot enough, I think, for the sensor to get as warm as it needed to be. So I used the... Uh... Oh, it's getting warm again. Let me take a look. Okay. I had to dial in the uh, fan controller sensitivity a little bit, but I think I've got it now. I mean, I haven't actually taken it for a drive. I'm just saying it's not overheating sitting in the driveway right now. It's gone from about 194 to 198 and seems to be holding right there. So I think there's a couple things. I think the system needed to be uh, bled again, which I did. Um, so I don't think it has any air in it now. I think that the temperature probe needed to be in an even hotter location. So I've done that. And I think the sensitivity on the fan controller needed to be adjusted. So I've done that too. Not to mention the original wiring be messed up. So lots of little problems. It seems like it might actually be working reliably now. I'm just gonna let it idle for a little bit and we're gonna see what happens. I went for a short drive around town and the temperature stayed between 185 and 200, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now I need to figure out which fuse I need to tap into in place of the one I'm using right now, which is more than just the convertible top, apparently. It also must control the relay that controls the windows. So I'll get that sorted out, and then coming up, I need to do a clutch flywheel and get the car inspected. I'll probably be taking it somewhere to do those because I don't really want to drop the transmission on jack stands in the garage. So see you in the next project. All right, so the radiator appears to be leaking. This is the old CSF radiator. You're not gonna be able to see this, but right down there, it keeps turning blue. Yeah, the angle's not gonna be good enough. No. Uh, it keeps turning blue from coolant, so we're assuming that the, uh, the fan excursion from the fall messed up the radiator. Or maybe I jabbed a hole in it trying to get the temperature probe to work. But, uh, it's old enough that it's probably due to be replaced anyway, so it's a CSF. It looks like it was a pretty good radiator. I'm going to try Mishimoto uh, because supposedly it has 30% more capacity and it's pretty cheap. So if something goes wrong with it, I can more easily get another. Now we're going to take it out. Alright, the radiator is back out, and here is the old one. You can see there's a lot of wounds from a lot of uh, fun times. Previous owner and me, and then here's the new Mishimoto one. Uh, I decided not to go with another CSF, mostly because I've had a CSF and it seems okay. There's a couple design things I don't love, like the location of the drain port. And so I figured we'll try Mishimoto's, got a great warranty, and uh, see how it does. So another project that I'm doing while everything's out here is installing this kinematic speed radiator air duct. So I've got these two installed, these two supports right now, and I've got them just wobble loose so that I can make sure everything mates up. And then uh, there's the rest of it right there, and that's designed to funnel a lot of uh, air into the bottom of the radiator. What I've read is for E36s, that's one of the most important things you can do is make sure that you've got all the air ducting in place, which obviously this car does not have a lot of the original air ducting. So this is something where you can add it to a track ready car. And I gotta say, I have not actually used this yet to see what impact it has on temperatures, but I'm very impressed by kinematic speed. They include these really easy printed out directions, tell you exactly what to do. Uh, the bags are very clearly labeled. Like, I'm, I'm very impressed with that level of detail so far.
the radiator duct is in, it fits really awesome. I don't know how the performance is yet, obviously, but highly recommend it as far as quality and materials and everything, well worth the price. Expansion tank is mounted to the radiator. Radiator is all plumbed up. These uh, other zip ties are special like uh, fan zip ties. These ones feel a lot better than the Mishimoto ones. I'll put them in the description. And then the fan feels very secure here. On this end, we're going with the NPT probe as opposed to the one that just pokes through the fins. Hopefully that'll help prevent messing up any more of the fins on this new radiator. And now it's time to put it on the ground or put the back end on the ground and start bleeding. All right, we are back up in the air, but outside the garage so that I'm not gonna be filling the garage with fumes. I've got distilled water now because I think I'm only maybe low like a half gallon or so, but I need to let the coolant circulate. And I've got a mix of pre-mixed and BMW pure 100%, so that's why I'm going to dilute a little bit with the, um, with the distilled water because this is only going to be driven in warm weather, so more water, less pure coolant would be good. But I'm going to get the temperature sensor hooked up, and we're going to see if anything leaks. Must have gotten some more air bubbles out of the system because the temperature has dropped by like 35 degrees in the last two minutes. And that level's been going down just a little bit. That is a nice looking temperature. Completely bleeding the cooling system took close to an hour. I wouldn't say an E36 system is necessarily complicated once you figure it out, but it's definitely more sensitive than other cooling systems I've worked on. The NPT temperature probe Mishimoto sent me with the new radiator worked much better than the probe that pushed through the radiator fins, and I'm a lot more comfortable not having to bend the fins. Everything you see in the video took me until mid-November to completely iron out, so it was almost a two-month downtime spent working through problems. Right after that, the M3 got its new clutch and flywheel, and finally, in April of this year, I was able to get it back out on the autocross course, and it did fantastic. The electric fan conversion has been rock solid for about eight months now, and I'm really happy with it.